So today we're going to look at flying from the Venice airport, which is a uh, class G airport, or often referred to as a class E airport, but the Echo airspace starts 700 feet above the surface, so we're going to be taking off from Gulf airspace. We're going to be flying north about 20 miles into class Charlie airspace at Sarasota International, and we're going to look at all the radio calls, all the steps to take uh, to get you into that class Charlie airspace, all the way to a landing at the class Charlie airport, and also taxied in to the ramp and how to uh, request those taxi instructions, how to understand them, and how to read a taxiway diagram. Key Ann Arbor Tower, right turn northbound approved, runway 24 cleared for takeoff. Rear contact, clock 0164, and that's going to be a flight So before we depart Venice here on runway 23 and head towards Sarasota, first thing we're going to go ahead and do is switch over to the Sarasota ATIS. So that's going to be our first thing we want to get when we leave. So we're going to have that all dialed up at 124.37. So we're going from a Gulf airport, a pilot controlled airport, no tower, to a Class Charlie airport. And of course there's echo airspace that starts at 700 feet above us. That doesn't really affect us any. We'll self-announce on our way out of here. Once we climb up, we'll get the ATIS for Sarasota, listen to that, get the information for the airport, and then we'll go ahead and contact Approach as our next step before we proceed inbound to the airport. We'll go ahead and check for any conflicting traffic and make our radio call. Venice traffic, Cherokee, Zero Sun Whiskey, departing runway 23, conflicting traffic, please advise, Venice. We'll set 10 flaps for takeoff. Get lined up with the runway and roll our controls over to the left there since we have that left cross one coming in. We'll start with the controls all the way over to the left and slowly roll them back to neutral as we accelerate. Just using just enough left aileron as we pick up speed to hold that left wing down, keep it from getting picked up. And the controls of course become a lot more effective as we speed up here. Airspeed's alive, gauges are in the green, slowly rolling those controls back to neutral, using a little bit of right rudder to maintain direction, easing in a little bit of back pressure. As we come up to 60 there, pass through 60, we rotate and we're up. Climbing for 85 miles per hour. Looking for traffic, sky looks clear. And we're climbing straight up as we come up to 500 feet. That's where we're going to make our very first turn. Today we're heading north, so we're going to make a turn towards the north at 500 feet. We are clear on the right. We're going to go ahead and start making that right-hand turn with right aileron and right rudder. We're banked just the amount I want, so I'm going to set my ailerons to neutral. Just hold this bank angle all the way through the turn. And I really don't need much pressure at all. Just barely touching the controls, just a few fingers on them to hold the airplane where I want her. We're still climbing at 85. As we come around to follow the coastline north here, we'll go ahead and roll out with some left aileron. A little bit of left rudder. All right, so we are up out of Venice. We're gonna go ahead and make our departure call. And I'm gonna make some little S-turns here as we're climbing to make sure there's no traffic in front of us. Venice traffic, Cherokee Zero Sun Whiskey, departing the traffic pattern to the north, Venice. Traffic looks clear. We're gonna climb up to 1,600 today for our initial altitude. And go ahead and listen to the Sarasota ATIS. Sarasota Airport information, Gulf, NATO observation time 1853 Zulu, winds 150 at 11, visibility 10, sky conditions 2 clouds, 5000, temperature 282.19 or altimeter 3000, visual approach in use, landing and departing runways 14 and 22, land and hold short operations in effect. Ground control and clearance delivery are combined on frequency 121.9er. All aircraft read back runway assignment and hold short instructions with your call sign. Advise on initial contact, you have information Golf. All right, we have information Golf. I'm going to go ahead and reduce power here and push my nose forward as we come up to 1,600 for our initial cruise altitude. And I'm pushing forward kind of hard as we accelerate here. 
So I'm going to go ahead and use my trim. I'm going to unscrew my light bulb so that we can trim nose down. And I'm not trimming to go down or to go up. I'm trimming to relieve the control pressure. I'm pushing forward and I want to stop pushing forward. So I just want to turn that knob up there until I don't feel like I'm pushing or pulling on the controls any longer. It's not about trying to trim nose down to go down a little bit because that'll just make you speed up. And as you speed up, you generate more lift and eventually you'll start climbing again. So we want to just simply trim to relieve control pressure. Hold the airplane where you want her, trim to relieve that pressure that you're using. Don't trim to go up or down. Use power to go up or down. Power for altitude, pitch for airspeed. And trim is a factor of pitch. All right, we'll go ahead and contact Tampa Approach as our next frequency. They control the airspace around Sarasota. And we're about 15 miles outside of Sarasota, so that's a good distance to call. We like to call 20 miles out, but we're already within 20 miles when we take off out of Venice. Tip approach, Cherokee, Niner Niner, 07 Whiskey. Number 156 Echo Whiskey, Tampa approach. You can proceed direct to Sarasota. If you'd like runway 22, it's available. And so we call up first with just our call sign just to get his attention. We don't want to give him a whole spiel at once because clearly he's very busy. He'll call us back when he's ready. Uh, you're following traffic, one moving to 12 Now the key is to remember that we have to have two-way radio communication established before we enter his airspace, before we enter the Charlie airspace. He has to acknowledge us by name. He doesn't have to clear us into the airspace, but he must acknowledge us by name. Departure Delta 2378, are we still with you? Well, I've tried to ship you twice. Uh, Delta 2378, contact Miami Center 132.35. 3235. We'll see if we can call him back here again. Number 907 Whiskey, there he is. Tampa Approach, go ahead. That's Cherokee 99907 Whiskey, approximately 15 miles south of Sarasota International, inbound for landing with Gulf. November 9907 Whiskey, radar contact, Squawk 0164, and uh, climb VFR to 2100. 0164 in the box, and VFR to 2100, 07 Whiskey. So he wants us to get us a little bit higher to try to clear the air for maybe... Whiskey, Sarasota is golf, current altimeter is 2998, you can expect right traffic for runway 14. 2998, we'll expect right traffic for runway 14, 07 Whiskey. So he's got us going up to 2100 to get some traffic below us, pass underneath us. He read us back the altimeter, we want to make sure we read back the altimeter because that's a required read back. So we have our altimeter set right, 2998, so we're not going to be too low or too high. We get good separation between aircraft and importantly, terrain. We get good separation between terrain. He told us to expect right traffic for runway 14. If we were to lose radio communications, we would just simply enter right traffic for runway 14 and look for a light gun signal from the tower. Again, as we come up here to 2100, all I did to climb is just add in power. That means we're just going to climb at the exact same airspeed we were trimmed for. I don't have to push or pull. I'm going to go ahead and push forward a little bit here and reduce power. That'll help us stop our climb a little sooner. And since we were trimmed out nice and for level flight before, we should still be trimmed for level flight right now. And we are. I don't have to push or pull at all. We're staying right here, level at 2100. He didn't give me a heading inbound. He just ex expect right traffic. I'm going to go ahead and follow the shoreline and maybe bear a little bit to the right, a little bit inland to the east. Um, rather than just following the shoreline directly. But you can expect things like follow the shoreline or fly heading a 330. That keeps you slightly away from the airport to give extra room between you and other arrivals and departures coming in and out of Sarasota. Skyline 932 on X-ray Tampa departure, I didn't, and uh... Your only restriction is 2100, VFR at 2100, we'll wait for him to tell us lower. If we did never got lower, and we were handed off to the tower, and we're still at 2100, and we're real close to the airport, real close to the runway, as soon as we get a landing clearance, that is what gives us permission to descend out of 2100. Once you're cleared to land, that is as good as um, avoiding your clearance of an altitude restriction, so that you can actually, uh, of course, maneuver for a normal landing. It is very possible that sometimes they will hold you at 2100 for too long and get you too close to the airport and you're still up way too high to make a good landing. So you could either extend out, extend out the downwind, or you could simply let the tower know that if they told you to turn in tight or turn to short, told you to turn your right base already, that you can just let them know, hey look, I'm too high, I need to either go around or I need to make a 360 out here, a left 360, a right 360, to go ahead and ascend down to a more normal altitude before uh, I get lined up for my landing. Thank you. 
Tampa Approach Station 339. As we're flying in here, we're going to go ahead and pull out our approach checklist. We have our ATIS L10, we have all our temperature set, our approach brief. We're going to be making a full stop landing, runway 14, expecting great traffic. Our common nav is set, our fuel sector valve is set to the fullest tank. Our mixture, we're going to set to rich at this point. And our strobe Again, landing lights are turned on. Our strobe is off since it's broad daylight and it won't do as much good. We're trying to save that light bulb. And our seats are locked. Our seat belts are on. Seven ways to traffic 12 o'clock, four miles turning westbound. So Pilatus 1500 climbing to your altitude. Looking for traffic, zero seven whiskey. And so we have traffic 12 o'clock. And he said he was climbing our 1500 for 2100. I believe I have him in sight there. So we can go ahead and report that traffic site. 36 connect Sarasota Tower, 120.1. 120.1, there's a lot of tower connection, 686. With the radio this busy, I won't even bother recording that traffic site because he's no factor for us. We're VFR, so we're responsible for our own separation. And uh, if I can't get a word in edgewise, no sense in me blocking up the frequency just to report traffic site. There's a little break here, and Zero some Whiskey's got the traffic site. We let him know. Zero Whiskey, Roger. I'll have lower for you shortly. Zero some Whiskey. Part of the reason why you do want to let him know if you have traffic in sight, if able, is because, like he said, I'll have lower here for you shortly, meaning I'll let you descend here shortly. Basically, he's holding us up at this altitude until he knows that we have all the other traffic in sight and he can bring us down and that we will maintain visual separation between us and the other traffic. We're responsible for our own separation. He's helping, but we're responsible ultimately. He wants to make sure that we're going to do a good job separating ourselves from other traffic. And again, I wasn't given a heading, I wasn't given a fall, the shoreline clearance, I was just told, expect right traffic. So I'm flying towards the airport to get myself lined up for a right downwind for runway 14. Still maintaining 2100 until I hear otherwise. Departure ident, maintain 1600. With the flash, maintain at 1.6, Montana 61. Montana 6 one we're to contact to southeast of Sarasota. And I'm just using traffic. this guy right here to hold myself level. This instrument panel in relation to the horizon looking out far ahead. Copy that traffic signal. Far ahead. That helps me maintain my level flight attitude. I can also use on my peripherals Montana 6 one, my wingtips in relation to the horizon to tell if I'm level or not. Montana 6 one. All right, so we're on a pretty wide right downwind, still about two and a half, three miles from the airport on a right downwind for 1-4 at 2,100, so pretty high, but better high than low. We're going to turn a little bit more towards the airport, get us a little closer to uh, a tighter right downwind. Stand by, be right back with you, controller change in progress. So he said controller change in progress. That's a bad time to call him if you do have any questions for him because he's trying to brief the other controller on all the other airplanes he was working and now the other guy is trying to get briefed, understand what's going on in the sky and then sit down and take the chair for him so that the other guy can go to the bathroom or take a little break. Montana 6-1, climb maintain 4,000, kind of departure 1, 2, correction, 1, 3, 4, 5. Don't be surprised if sometimes you're talking to a controller and all of a sudden the voice changes and now you're, you were talking to a male controller and now you're talking to a female controller and you go, huh, what happened? They simply just change shifts. We'll go ahead and dial up 120.1, since that is our tower frequency, and you know, we want to have everything set up, so as soon as we're giving that change over to the tower, we can just hit the flip-flop key and be right over to Sarasota Tower. We'll roll out. Zero seven whiskey, are you starting the downwind turn? Zero seven whiskey for our model, right downwind one four. Zero seven whiskey, Roger, do you set to maintain 1,600 traffic, your phone is one o'clock, three miles out of 1,000 seminal. Down to 1,600, looking for traffic, zero seven whiskey. All right, so we're looking to follow some traffic here. We don't have it in sight just yet. You're ready to go. We're just going to go ahead and reduce power. We don't push or pull again. We just reduce power. We're trimmed for the right airspeed. We're just going to descend down nice and easy, about four to 500 feet per minute, down to 1,600. And this is normally where I'd want to go ahead and start. Seven whiskey, the uh, Seminole's just passing off your right. Uh, proceed inbound to runway 14. Contact the tower. Oh, contact the tower on 20.1. Traffic in sight, zero seven whiskey. All right, we got Charlie, Charlie, turn left, heading 18. Traffic in sight off our right wing. He's way below us. We're going to go ahead and reduce some more power so we can start descending even more. And we're going to go ahead and make our right base. Since he's even with us, that's when we can go ahead and turn our right base as he passes us on the final approach. Sarasota Tower, Cherokee Zero Sum Whiskey, right base 14. Cherokee 99 Zero Sum Whiskey, Sarasota Tower, runway 14, clear to land number two, following a seminal short final. 
clear land, runway 14, number 2, 99 07 Whiskey. So he used our full call sign. We'll want to use our full call sign if he's using our full call sign. We're on our right base here, and this is not really a normal traffic pattern that we'd be flying, but we're going to go ahead and slow down to 80 here. We'll go ahead and give ourselves some nose up trim to help with that. And so the tower, Beneteau, 6 Alpha Bravo, if you don't and have we can any go ahead traffic, and flip like on our fuel pump and pull our first 10 degrees of flaps. We'll roll on to final, and we're still awfully high here. We're on final, about a two and a half mile final, and over a thousand feet, still 1300. We'll go ahead and reduce our power even more here. Here our last final check, mixture's full of rich, carb heat is off. Gas on the fullest tank, flaps are set, and throttle set. We got flaps to go, we got two more notches if we need them. We're flying at 80, we got a little bit of a right crosswind coming here, so we're crabbed slightly to the right. And we got four white lights out there showing us we're way high, we're a thousand feet, and we're a mile and a half final, that is way high. We'll go ahead and pull 25 degrees of flaps. I don't want to reduce my power all the way to idle here and just lower my nose to the ground or, you know, and try to descend down without any power because that could be a lot of cooling on this engine, actually, since we were flying the engine so hot up high and we're running hard, now we're going to shock cool it and cool it down too quickly. We want to keep the engine actually producing power and actually create some drag instead. And that'll keep the cylinders warm and let them cool down at a slower rate rather than shock cooling them and possibly causing some uh, metal fatigue racking over time. And especially important to remember here, as we touch down and roll out, we're going to expect to hear some either instructions to vacate the runway, or we're simply going to vacate the runway and then let him know where we're going, and he'll probably get a hand us off the ground. If he's really not busy, we probably won't get that ground hand off, he'll just have us stay with him. And the most important thing here is we are cleared to land. We heard we're clear to land, we know we're clear to land. If we were short final and we were unsure, were we clear to land or not? Simply call him back. Hey, is Zero Summer Whiskey clear to land? And he'll let you know. It is possible that sometimes they do forget to clear you to land. They might give you instructions to turn right base and never clear you. Again, coming in here for landing here. We're descending down on the glide path, looking good. Just one hand on the controls, nice light grip. Nose is off to the right, I'm going to go ahead and start bringing it to the left with some left rudder. Put my right wing down a little bit. Make small corrections. We're going to be down on the right wheel first. Looking all the way down that runway, power's out. I have the citation in sight, CC-72 Charlie. Number three. And rolling all the way over to the right with the controls as we finish out the landing. We'll go ahead and slow down, and we'll make Charlie 2 here on the left. Delta. And if we don't get instruction, we can turn off at whatever taxiway we like. We just want to vacate that runway as soon as practical. Go ahead and get our tail across this whole short line here. And we'll set the parking brake here. We'll uh, go ahead and call the tower, let them know where we're going, and after also do our after landing checklist. Zero Summer Tower, Zero Summer Whiskey is going to Retrix North. Zero Summer Whiskey, contact Ground Point Niner. See you later. Ground Point Niner, Zero Summer Whiskey. All right, he handed us off to Ground. We're not going to call Ground just yet. We're going to dial in Ground 121.9. He said Ground Point Niner, and this is a really interesting fact. Most ground control frequencies start with 121. Um, the vast majority of them, in fact, like 98% or 99% of them. Very few airports have ground on something else besides 121 point something. So, ground point one would be 121.1. Ground point seven, 121.7. Probably not getting contact ground on 121.5 because 121.5 is our emergency frequency. So, ground on 121.9, we'll put that into active. The uh, radar vectors. And we're going to go ahead and do our after landing checklist. On departure. Heading zero nine or zero, maintain one thousand six hundred. Our flaps are retracted. minutes after Our car heat is off. Tampa our strobe landing light is off. Our fuel pump is off. Our trim is set to our takeoff position. And our comm radio set to one two one point nine. And I'm going to go ahead and open up our door here and get a little bit of air since it's pretty toasty here in Florida. Departure frequency one nineteen decimal six five and five seven three six in the box. Section six three six. Section six eight six read back correct. Oh, and Charlie, hold short of two two. We're gonna go ahead and 
Ask them taxi Retrix North, they're going to tell us taxi via, uh, looks like Gulf Hotel Foxtrot, but we're going to go ahead and confirm on our taxiway diagram, pull it up on our phone here, or tablet, three, three, or if we had printed it up Charlie. before we left. It's off runway 14 on Juliet for Retrix. Station 339 Kilo, Charlie, sir, to the ground, taxi Retrix via Juliet, pass behind the uh, other citation coming out of the ramp, he's going to be going uh, other direction. And finally, we'll get a word in it twice here. Roger, 339 three, Kilo, Charlie, we'll taxi via Juliet, and uh, we'll pass behind that citation. Sir, so to ground, Cherokee 07 Whiskey, clear runway 14 at Charlie 2, taxi Retrix North. Cherokee 9907 Whiskey, sir, to ground, taxi to Retrix North via straight ahead on Golf, left on Hotel Foxtrot. Straight ahead on Golf, left Hotel Foxtrot, 07 Whiskey. All right, so that checks out with what we expected, what we looked at our map and expected to get. So we're straight ahead on golf. We see golf taxiway here. If we were unsure in any way, shape, or form, if we didn't know where golf started or ended or how to get there or where we were even, we would just say, I'm unfamiliar with the airport and I'm requesting progressive taxi. There's the ground. Cherokee Zero Sum Whiskey is unfamiliar with the airport. Request progressive. And they will give you step-by-step -step instructions. They'll watch you every step of the way, make sure you don't make a wrong turn somewhere. And they'll tell you, all right, you're coming up golf to hotel here. Hotel's going to be your next one. Make a left turn on hotel. Oh, Foxtrot's going to be your next one. Make a right turn on to Foxtrot. Six eighty two cross runway two two. Cross two two exit six eighty two.